My name is Javier Gonzalez, and I am a freelance instrument player in the city of Los Angeles. What you just heard was an extended version of the third A2 from the Technical Studies for Cornette book by Herbert Clark. Now, the reason for expanding the etude in such a manner was to demonstrate the success I've had with a method I've been developing since 2006. I refer to this method as the lead pipe method. This lead pipe method was heavily influenced by methods like the Claude Gordon routine, the James Stamp book, the Bill Adams routine, and many others. What I took away from these methods, to put it simply, was about connecting all the registers on the instrument. Of course, there is more depth to each of those methods, but on the basic level, that's what it's about. But this lead pipe method came into existence by the influence of the World Music Department from California Institute of the Arts. I did my undergraduate and master's degree at this school, and because of that environment, a whole new world of possibilities for the trumpet opened up, and I came to realize that the traditional approach to the trumpet would not be enough to maintain a certain level of performance. So through many influences and constant trials and errors, I was able to develop a specific routine for myself that allowed me to achieve this and push my own physical limits. The lead pipe method consists of doing a specific routine on the instrument without the tuning slide. There are specific slots that exist on the lead pipe, for example. As you can tell, the slots are aggressive and not forgiving. Now the reason I refer to them as slots and not breaks is because my method consists of maneuvering through those breaks to the point where they seem to disappear. In these next three examples I will demonstrate what I mean by that. In the first example, you do notice that the brakes are still apparent, but I'm able to maneuver through the three octaves by only adjusting my armature and not resetting it. The brakes that exist on the lead pipe are much smoother even though I am ascending two octaves, then descending three octaves to the pedal range. In the second example, the level of difficulty increases due to the fact that I'm approaching the slots via a scale motion. Slowly you're starting to hear the breaks blend in with the movement of the scale. So once mastering this technique, the term break is no longer relative to the lead pipe, due to the fact that the breaks are becoming slots as part of a moving line, which now leads me to my final example. In the final example, and the most difficult of the three, I am able to move through the octaves with only a hint of slots being present. The slots are definitely there. This example is difficult to achieve, but mastering this has allowed me to tap into two additional octaves on the trumpet. Now I am using false fingerings for the pedal notes with a 4 valve trumpet. I know many of you are thinking that the 4 valve trumpet is making this easier. As amazing as this trumpet is, it is not doing the work for me. I still had to put in the time to figure it out. But what I'm trying to demonstrate is to achieve the best quality of sound across the whole range. Using false fingerings allows me to have the least amount of job movement. This gives me the best results to connect the extreme low range to the extreme high range and vice versa without resetting the armature. Understanding the mechanics of the lead pipe 
has given me the tools to achieve this level of control. Now, of course, you'll never come across a piece of music that is as demanding as the extended Clark Etude or play a phrase that requires you to cover five octaves in one breath. I'm also not saying that composers and arrangers should expect trumpet players to be able to do this. This is only a demonstration of what I've been able to achieve while developing this method over the last 13 years. I am working on a method book that will give a detailed explanation about my approach to the lead pipe. So for now, I hope this introduction video can create dialogue amongst the trumpet community. I know there will be many questions, and I hope future videos and the method book will be able to address them as best possible. I want to give thanks to Vicente, Keo, Carlos, and the rest of the Stombi family for making such amazing equipment. Also, a very big thank you to Bill Bing for his generosity and mentorship for the last 19 years. He was a major influence and motivator for moving forward with this method. Thank you all for watching.